Um, I usually do a new plants edition for my master gardeners and whatever, but there are some caveats I need to state before we get started. Um, the first caveat is um, the descriptions you hear will be from the plant catalogs. So um, take that into mind when they talk about um, how um, well it spreads or how aggressive it is or you know the colors you know there's not really some true blue plants out there flowers um so i'll kind of point those out to you but we only have like 20 to 30 minutes so we're i usually do perennials annuals trees and shrubs vegetables so we're only going to do the perennial plants today so hopefully we'll not go as fast that you can't understand what i'm saying but um here we go maybe Oh, there we go. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about, and these are in alphabetical order for asparagus. Um, usually by scientific name, they'll be in alphabetical order, but you should have the slides with you. Um, this is asparagus fern. It gets about 24 to 36 inches tall. It likes partial sun. Um, and this one is pretty much a perennial um, later in, you know, probably zone six, uh, is probably at the top of its list. Um, it's usually a zone seven plant, so this one may or may not, but this one will give you a different texture in your um, garden. So this, I, I kind of like this one. It's just green. It may put on some fruit, um, but um, it's got that really fuzzy looking fern, fuzzy fern frizz um, is one of these. So this is, this is something that um, will go into a container like this shows here, but you can also put it into your garden and it'll be just fine. Um, again, a different kind of texture, probably for the front of the row in the perennial garden. This is Achillea, sorry, millifolium terracotta, milky rock, milly rock, yellow terracotta. This is a different color for most of our um, uh, yarrows. It has a little bit of orange to it. Looks a little uh, terracotta-y. This one is very hardy, hardy to zone four, does get about 12 inches tall. So it's also a short um, yarrow. Some of those like coronation gold gets really tall um, at about three feet. So um, it, it's known for its compact. It holds together nicely. Um, it doesn't flop out so, like some of the taller um, yarrows that you'll see there on the market. You can remove those flowers and you can encourage it to rebloom. Um, and it, and it blooms all summer long, usually late spring, summer into autumn, if you keep it, um, trimmed back. So for those of you that love deadheading, uh, this yarrow might be a good, pro uh, good plant for you in the process. Okay. Um, I love a still bees and they're starting to do a lot of breeding with a still bees. Um, this one is dark side of the moon for its purple foliage and its purple flowers. Um, the height of the foliage only gets about 22 inches tall. The scape gets about 36 inches tall, so another foot over the top of the plant. Um, but it has this deep, dark chocolate burgundy leaves, and it stays attractive throughout its season. Um, the They emerge with a yellow margin, uh, sorry, yellow, they emerge yellow with a dark margin with a glossy sheen that becomes completely dark as they age. So that might be a nice color change in your garden. It's very striking against all this um, chartreuse and um, light green variegated foliage that's behind it. And it has a rosy purple flower. Um, and and the, watch the astilbes as they start to come out because they're coming out with a lot more foliage variations and a lot of different colors of flower. Um, we all know our echinaceas. We love them. They have been breeding them for probably the past 20 to 30 years. And every year we get a plethora of them that come out. Um, this one's one in a melon. It's the color coded series. Um, it gets about 26 inches tall and about a 20 inch spread. So it's kind of one of those moundy plants. These flowers are five and a half inches wide. Um, they're most one of the most large flowers that you can find in your echinaceas. Um, and they're held horizontally, so they're very nice daisy shapes, and they kind of look uh, like a cantaloupe color, um, again, from the description. It's li a lighter flower color than Orange You Awesome, which I have a feeling is more orange, and not a true yellow like Yellow My Darling. So it's kind of that in-between. If you're doing a monochromatic garden, this one will fit between the, or the, between the butter yellows and 
the um, dark oranges that you'll find. Bees love this. Um, you can actually get some seeds from uh, that the uh, uh, goldfinches will eat later on. So it's a good one to have in your garden um, in any situation. I like this one. This is Sunseeker Salmon or Salmon if you're you know, from a different part of the country. This is a kind of a unique color. Um, they start off um, a lovely shade of salmon pink with some soft yellow petals in the center. And then the bloom turns pale as they mature and a large dark crimson cone forms, enhancing their beauty. Um, they are fairly short. I'm looking for the uh, height here. Let's see, um, only 24 inches tall with about a 24 inch spread. They can definitely go into containers like you see here. I'd put it in a bigger container um, or mixed in with some other things in a container. It repeats bloom, so it says. Um, it says it's deer resistant, tolerant of poor soils, drought tolerant once established, um, and it overwinters well. It should. It's, it's a zone from three to nine. So even um, farther north, you can plant this one out. It's definitely cold hardy. Um, you can use it as a cut flower, although it's a little short for a cut flower, um, and it will will um, bloom later a little bit into the season. So you'll get kind of a three season color out of that one. Okay, apparently I was in the mood for echinacea this year. Um, this one's yellow ombre. Um, I like this one. It has a it has a different um, it has light yellows and dark yellows and some that kind of lean towards orange, but this one has a very vibrant, vibrant color and it's an all American selection. So you, this one, you can actually start from seed. Um, they sell it in seed form. Um, and as it starts out as an intense gold yellow, and then it um, fades into um, all the different colors of that yellow. Um, very uniform growth habit. Um, multi-branch plants that produce, as you can see, a prolific number of flowers. Um, pollinators will flock to it and you will have um, even birds coming back on these seeds. So all the echinaceas produce a good um, edible seed for a lot of our bird species. Okay, I promise you this is the last echinacea. This one's strawberry and cream. Um, this one has a little bit rounder cone. Um, again, these one, these, this variety gets about 24 inches tall and wide. Um, it's plantable in pots. I like it for the little short petals that look like a little skirt. Um, and they start out with a little strawberry pink and kind of fade to a uh, white at the tips of those uh, petals on there. Um, it, it's a series of double flowered cone flowers. So you might see something in the cone fiction series. I have a feeling they're all um, sweet treat names <laughs> from the cone the confections. Um, butterflies will come to this. You see a bee in the in the picture or bumblebees love this plant. Um, and they are actually all the echinaceas are long lasting in bouquets um, as a cut flower. Um, so you can definitely bring those in. Make sure you kind of shake off the bees before you bring them in. You don't want bees in your house for that. Um, has anybody grown Heliopsis? I love false sunflower. Um, and this one's called Bit of Honey. It's a little shorter than most of our native um, uh, <laughs> false sunflowers out there, but I liked the foliage. The foliage comes out as this variegated foliage, and it I hate to tell you, it looks like it's sick. It looks like it needs some nitrogen. It does not. Um, it's a middle of the border, um, and these flowers are three and a half, three to three and a half inches wide, um, and they're fully semi-double with multiple rows of those gold petals. Usually our, our native fall sunflower has just a single row of petals. So this one's a little shorter. I think our native fall sunflower gets to four feet tall. Um, this one's a little shorter at 24 to 36. Um, this one looks really short at, uh, looks like about 12 inches tall. Um, if you can stand the variegation, sometimes it's good variegation. Sometimes it looks like it's sick, but um, it is not sick. Um, this one's bushy, well branched. Has a this one has a really good flower coverage on it. It's a workhorse. It will come back year after year after year. It's called bit of honey, probably because the bees love it so much. Heucheras. They've done a lot with heucheras lately. Um, you might notice this one or call it corabels. It's not really um, 
grown for its flowers, but they have come out of with a lot of foliage. So if you're looking for something in the in your shade garden, most of what we talked about is sun gardening. But um, the corabels, the hucaras definitely go in the shade. They can tolerate a little bit of sun um, if they get some afternoon shade. This one, frosted berry, um, have has a new the new leaves come out with a slight blush of or frosting to the leaves and the charcoal stems hold white flowers on rosy pink calyxes so you get kind of a two-tone um look with the flowers i didn't find a good picture of the flowers that's why there's not a photo um mixed this one does really well in containers it's um the leaves are five to six inches across that's huge for a heucra um the corabels are very easy to grow. They don't need a whole lot of fertilizer. If you fertilize them too much, they tend to flop open and their um, petioles get really long. So kind of ease back on the fertilization a little bit. Um, you can use them as edging plants. They go well in containers. I like the foliage in a, in a bouquet because it looks a little different. Um, you can... The flowers definitely go into um, bouquets very easily. Um, and this is the Dolce series. So this is frosted berry. Um, and then um, frosted berries on the left. Um, the other one that I pictured is actually um, wild berry. Sorry, frosted berry is on the right. I've got my, my uh, pictures mixed up there. I apologize for that. So this is um, Corabels or Hikara. Now. A friend of mine has these and she sent me this and she's like, hey, we need a new hybrid. Um, this is actually, it's called Ampliflora iris, but it's a wet weather iris. Um, it's an interspecific hybrid, probably involving Japanese reef iris. Um, and it's sterile. So it's not going to seed itself around your pond or around your um, creek or stream or water feature that you may um, find out there. Um, I, and this is kind of where I gave that caveat. It says Ming treasure is a vigorous selection of this new species. What does vigorous mean? It's probably going to spread but it's not going to spread by seeds because it's sterile. It's going to spread by rhizomes because this iris, um, really does well along the edges of creeks and um, streams. It's significantly larger than most of the iris species that we have, um, and it's very commanding. So I believe that the flowers here are about four or five feet in the air. Um, the flowers are very large. They're four and a half inch flowers for a Japanese iris. That's pretty good size. Um, and they're that pretty mid-violet color with the, the, with the yellow crust, as you can see in this picture. Um, and it has very small white, they call those signal areas. Um, they're not the, the German bearded iris. They're definitely the Japanese style iris that are kind of flat and open as opposed to the um, traditional, you know, uh, falls and uprights of a German iris. I want y'all to try Ming Treasure because I think it'll be really, really great. Um, it's, an, it's an impressive plant. It's going to stop people on the side of the street. They're going to want a piece of that. But, you know, it's pretty vigorous. You can share. So this is another All-American selection. And if you don't know what an All-American selection is, is that these plants get trialed for at least three to five years across the United States and into Canada. Um, and they're evaluated by judges on how well they perform in each of these regions. We actually have one of these at the UK Arboretum in Lexington. So it's kind of at the back of the Arboretum um in their um gardens gardens um and you can see them out there and you'll but they're not labeled yet they don't have an, a name they might just have a number but they usually have two or three um well, in this case uh shasta daisies um to compare them to so this is carpet angel can you figure out in the the left hand picture which one carpet angel is um it's, it's this one in the front. <laughs> it does look like a little carpet of white. It's beautiful. It's the first ever ground cover. So after these get evaluated, the judges all come together and they pick the winners for the year. Um, the problem is, is that, that usually the winners, um, and this is a regional winner, have to um, 
be grown from seed. So you can get seeds of this and grow it yourself. Um, this is a first year flowering perennial. They're day length neutral, meaning they bloom a little earlier in the season and that they will continue to bloom all season long. For that, it just kind of means that they're going to bloom all at once and then you'll get little flowers to come back um, intermittently throughout the rest of the season. But these are three inch blooms. And if you can see from the left picture, the the, the close up is really kind of interesting. They have, um, they only grow six inches tall and this flower bloom is about three inches wide that's kind of that's kind of interesting um and it spreads up to 20 inches wide so the plant can be 20 inches wide with three inch blooms on a little short stocky plant um new and it does this by branching um so you have a lot more flowers per stem as opposed to the standard um shasta daisy that's just like right here in the back where you get a couple of stems with um some some flowers on the top a little deadheading will go a long way to get even more blooms. It's hardy um, to zone four and to 10B. So if you're, that's a pretty big swath of the, uh, of the United States. So I would try some, and they've changed the name of Shasta daisies. They used to be chrysanthemums. Now they're leucanthemums. So try carpet angel. You'll find that in your local garden center, um, usually in plant form as opposed to seed form. Um, has anybody grown, um, summer, um, primrose? This is a ground cover primrose. I know we all do evening primrose and they have all that, those, those flowers that pop open in the, in the, in the evening time. But this is, um, this is called shimmer evening primrose. It's also an evening primrose, um, but it's a pollinator plant. It also attracts bees, sphinx moths, butterflies, um, and it was selected for these very narrow leaves that it has. I have uh, Missouriensis, which is Missouri primrose, um, but this is native to Kansas and Nebraska. So it's a little farther west, um, but look at that texture on that foliage. It's kind of got that blue green color with those lemony yellow flowers. It blooms in late spring. So probably about May, um, for us, May to early June, and then and it'll rebloom it later in the summer months. Um, drought resistant, drought tolerant has, um, you can probably find this from, it's a high country gardens introduction. So if you get their catalog, um, it's a great ground cover. It's fairly low. I think it's about six or eight inches tall. Um, it would probably do very well in what they call the hell strip between the sidewalk and the road. It has a good salt tolerance, um, has a low water tolerance. So if you forget to water it one time, it's not going to kind of die out on you. It spreads to 15 inches. Um, it gets, a, yeah, it gets about 18 inches tall. Oh, sorry, eight to 10, eight to 10 inches tall. Um, blooms sporadically throughout the season. Deer don't like it. So if you have a deer problem, um, they will not be munching on your um, uh, primrose. But again, this is a native, but native to Kansas and Nebraska, kind of a far west prairie plant for us. I love to put in grasses. If you don't have grasses in your landscape, you're missing out. Um, they really do kind of give you that movement in your garden. And this is prairie winds. Um, Niagara Falls, and this is switchgrass. So if you know it, um, not from Panicum, but from switchgrass, um, it's fairly small. I'm trying to look to see how big it is. It says it's, um, doesn't say, hmm. but it's not very big. It may be two or three feet tall. Um, and this one's, it says it's, doesn't tend to, um, splay out. It, it's, it, this is a good native grass. Um, if you like the miscanthus. Um, miscanthus has gotten kind of a bad name lately in the, you know, that it's becoming invasive. So we're trying to replace miscanthus with, um, this switchgrass and it looks pretty good. This one looks to have a little bit of a blue tint to the foliage. Um, let's see. 
halfway in height between Apache Rose and Totem Pole. I think Totem Pole is probably pretty tall, probably in the six foot range. I would say this is probably in the three to four foot range. Um, switchgrass gets its name from a peaceful swishing sound it makes when blowing in the wind. And it does have a really, if you're, if you're kind of out and you've got some water tinkling and you've got the wind, this, uh, panicum sounds really nice with that. Um, you can use it as a specimen. It looks pretty good by itself. It also does very well, um, in a, um, as a hedge or as a, as a windbreak or a screening, it does, it kind of arches. So it looks good around streams and ponds, or even you could put it in a container, a fairly large container. Um, but they tend to, you know, it, t it tends to, this one tends to remain standing unless we get some really heavy snow. And that's not very common here in uh, Kentucky very often for that. Um, flocks. Oh, I love flocks, but man, it gets that powdery mildew, no problem every year um this variety has been in selected and is improved for its resistant over typical phlox paniculata series varieties this one is sunset coral and i thought that was an awesome color to try to incorporate into your garden um it's kind of pink it's kind of orange um you're gonna have you're gonna have a fun time trying to fit that one in but it will definitely garner attention when you put that in there um, it's not as tall as our regular um, native garden flocks. Um, it's perfect for middle of the border. So I'm thinking probably two to three feet tall. Um, looks really good with some um, lots of flowers over the scapes. Even this little short one's got a flower spike on it. Um, and it's a staple um, of North American native gardens. So try that to put that into your um native garden and don't worry have to worry about powdery mildew um and butterflies love flocks so this is the tall flocks tall garden flocks sunset coral i would also try some of the other colors that they have in this collection this is just the new color for this year all right y'all have you tried salvias if you don't have salvias in your garden you are missing out this is blue by you don't say that one too fast or you'll get confused um, this one's definitely hardy here, 4B to 9A. If you would like a good touch of blue in your garden, this is also an All-American Selection winner. Um, the flowers bloom up to two weeks earlier than all the other varieties or the comparisons. Excellent winter hardiness and heat tolerance. Mine are looking pretty good right now. Um, blue by you will be your next new favorite perennial because you can use it as a pollinator. Bees love salvias. Um, you can cut them, bring them in. You can put them in a container. Um, and this one tends to bloom from late spring until fall. And if you re remove the spent blooms, again, if you deadhead, they'll kind of flower back again. And when you deadhead, people go, how do you deadhead? You want to cut back the flowers all the way back to this junction where it touches the plant. So you don't want to just leave a stub, cut it back to the leaves um, if you're going to leave it. If you're going to cut it for cut flower production or for cut flowers you can cut it pretty hard back and it'll be just fine it may take a little longer for that to um rebloom but it will rebloom sporadically throughout the rest of the season if you've got deer problems this may be a plant for you too it also attracts hummingbirds and you're like no it's not red the hummingbirds like the shape of the flower more than the color um, but they can see red pretty easily and they can see this blue fairly well too very mounded habitat. It gets about 24 inches tall with the same amount of width. So you're looking at about a 24 inch spacing. These plants get fairly large. Excellent heat tolerance. Um, and it's a meadow sage. So you're looking at salvias all over the world. This is a, a new variety from the All-American Selections. Now, this is Salvia nemorosa, And then we have Salvia ultraviolet. I love this color. It is a it is very violety as opposed to pink in the salvias. Um, this one's a little bit more um, compact. It only gets about 24 inches tall with a 24 inch width. Uh, it blooms summer to fall, usually about midsummer, so about mid July to about frost. Um, it will tolerate a little bit of a little bit of shade, not too much shade, but just a little bit of shade. It won't flower as well if you put it in the shade. Um, it has this iridescent purple color is why they've picked it. Um, 
And this is a salvia greggii. So if you're familiar with that, it is hardy from zone five to nine. Um, tolerates wide range of soils from clays to loams to rocky soils. Um, deer resistant, good for pollination. My hummingbirds love salvia greggii. It is a North American native, but it's been selected for a different color. It's been introduced this year, so you may not find it until next year into your commercial or your garden centers. But, at, you know, if you've got a favorite garden center or a greenhouse, ask them to buy, you know, hey, I've, I just saw this. Hey, can you get it next year? I'm looking for it um, out there. But this is Salvia Greggii Ultraviolet. I can put Greggii on the slide. It just messed everything up. So here's sedums. Now we're getting a little shorter. This is a great ground cover, but it's very delicate. It's not a big behemoth in the garden. It's hardy to zone six. So if you kind of get a little bit north of Kentucky, you may not be able to grow this one. But it only gets two to three inches tall and about five to seven inches in spread. That's why it's in this little tiny pot. Um, you can put it in a container. It loves, it needs sharp drainage. It is water tolerant. It loves heat. It's low maintenance. It'll probably flower, but because it's sedum, the flowers are probably not very showy. Um, loves this. Oops, sorry. Loves the sun. Um, needs needs full sun for that. Definitely drought tolerant. Another good hell strip kind of um, plant. Um, works well as a trailing component in a con in a larger container or a hanging basket. But because it's you know, and if you, it breaks off and it hits the ground, it'll probably root. So this is a nice little under undercut of your garden for sedums little shine okay Veron veronica speedwells fun um they come in a lot of different colors they come in whites they come in pinks they come in blues and they come in purples but this one is um magic show ever after there is a whole magic show series um, one, the last one, I had one last year called White Wands, so it's very similar to that, but these are blue, <laughs> um, a lavender blue flower, but I'll tell you, they tend to, uh, blue doesn't photograph well, so they tend to photo touch the blue flowers in catalogs and on the websites, so buyer beware. If it's a little bit more lavender than blue, you'll know why. This one does, um, have really long flower spikes so as you can see they start flowering at the bottom and as they age they flower towards the tip but these can be up to a foot long so they have a really long flowering period for many many weeks probably four to five weeks um their flowers are self-cleaning so you don't have to like go back out there and like clean off the old petals and I think here in this picture, you can see where some of the petals have fallen off on the ground. Um, it's highly valued. It's very easy to grow, has a long bloom time. You get a good bang for your buck. And this spiky flower shape goes well with Shasta daisies and cone flowers and black eyed seasons because it's a just a you, you want to mix it up a little bit. You don't want all daisies in your in your flower bed. Um, and this Veronica does tend to kind of give you an upright look. Bees love this plant, um, honeybees and bumblebees. So if you like Ever After, you might want to find the other Magic Show series and see what you like out of the series. Because there is a um, white one, there's a pink one, there's a purple one. They come in all the colors, um, but they're pretty short. Um, I think this one's only about, well... I think the foliage is only about 24 inches tall, but if you get another, you know, foot of flower on top of that, it'd be great. So 